I am in deep distress. The throes of anguish are upon me. My bombing, epic, out of this world sound system set up in my tiny dorm was left in storage over the summer. And when I set it up, upon arriving back to school, one of the, the right channel was being like funky. It was like glitching in and out, you know? I did some troubleshooting. I figured it must be the connections down here, right? I took my can of contact cleaner and cleaned everything. I put it back together, put it all, put it all back into place, and it doesn't put out any sound at all. None. I don't think you understand the gravity of this situation. What I'm led to believe, and I read about this on the internet, is there's like these security things, really specific, I know, but like it'll shut down the receiver basically um, to protect too much power going to the speakers. And it might be that they did that for whatever reason, that that security feature kicked in. The consensus seems to be, if I turn off the receiver, and then turn off the power, and then like hold the on button, and then turn the power back, just let me try this. Just gonna try this with the radio. Still nothing. Why must you be the way that you are? Well, I reset up everything as it would be if everything were working because one, I'm overly confident, and two, it looks better like this. Like listen, if you sit here and you blast some jams, not too loud of course, because you don't want to get a noise complaint, it's great. Life without music is like Taylor Swift's new song without the music video. Alone, it's like, this is not very good. And then you watch the music video and you're like, that's pretty good. And then you hear the song again without the music video and it's not very good. Let's try this sucker again. Let's turn on the uh, radio. What in tarnation? Oh, we are back to the original problem. Coming great through the left channel, not so hot through the right. I don't know what's up. One eternity later. Okay, look at this. Right now, speaker's working fine, okay? If I pick up the turntable, removing pressure from the receiver, right channel cuts out. Just gone. Put it back, it works fine. Because I have no interest in, in, in messing with this further, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm literally just gonna, just gonna take the turntable off and I'm gonna make the tuner and the receiver switch places. That makes sense to me. I recognize that that is not a permanent solution. That did not actually fix whatever the problem was. I also don't care. The thing is old and has tons of problems and I will eventually just upgrade. I'd rather do that than like put any money into it, you know? Especially considering I don't have any money. It's a violent, never-ending struggle. Speaking of violent, never-ending struggles, I am a junior in college now, which is terrifying. As you probably know, I'm an art student studying photography, and I hate to break it to you all, but there are students that show up to art school and are just like good at everything. And no matter what class they're in, they produce amazing work. I'm not one of them. As a photographer, I think I'm all right, you know? I think I think I can hold my own as a photographer. But when it comes to like any other medium, what I'm about to show you is my PowerPoint for something called spec review, specialization review. It's something that happens at the end of your junior year where you show your professors basically a summary of all the work you've done so far, and they determine based on the progress that you've made, whether you're ready to go on to the upper level classes. So as you can imagine, spec review can be stressful, but I am more insecure about showing this to you guys than I was about showing it to my professors, because they witnessed firsthand the growth that I've experienced. Whereas you guys are gonna look at me, the art student, expect some great art, and half of this is totally crappy. But I hope you'll be understanding, and uh, you know, maybe just get a kick out of it, all right? Enjoy this for what it's worth. If this is my journey as an artist, like beginning to end, I think I'm like here. I hope I'm here. I certainly don't feel very accomplished as an artist yet, and I'm more than okay with that. All right, let's start with perhaps the suckiest of the sucky. My first class in college was an 8 a.m. drawing class, and this is what I made on the first day. We were just supposed to make a benchmark drawing show where we were in the drawing process and this is what I created. It's an old projector and yeah, welcome to the world of bad art by Sam. But 
things got better. At about this point in the semester, I realized that if I just like put some time into drawing, that it would it would turn out better. Obviously, it's still pretty bad, but it's a step up, right? Things continued to get better and better, and then at the end of class for our final drawing, I decided to redraw the projector that I drew on the first day uh, in a still life. It's funny, there's a monster can in the back there because we had to have a can with a label on it, so there's a monster can in my still life. But I think you can see some improvement here, in the drawing world at least. Also from my first semester we have 2D design. Started with some radial stuff, and we did some implied shape. Actually had a lot of fun with these. We did some work based off the golden mean, you know, the swirly golden ratio thing. And then we have these, and these are like probably the, my favorite thing I made for this class. They're just stupid little collages that we did in preparation for a bigger collage project. And I just went to town. Like here we have a man and a woman behind a pane of glass or something with a heart with an eye in it and like we got an ocean and islands made of pita bread and I titled it Copenhagen Vegetables. I, I made titles for all these collages uh, with words from the newspapers that I was cutting out of. Here's another one, Eyes for Each Other. It's just totally stupid and I totally loved it. This is what we were preparing for. This is actually hanging on my wall right behind the camera, uh, the tactical squirrel. It was a fun process and at first I wanted to sell it because I thought it would sell, but now it's kind of become part of the permanent collection, so I don't think I will. Unless someone makes me a really, 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 really good offer. Hashtag winky face. But for real though, if you guys want any of these things, hit me up. Or if you go on my website and you want prints of any of my work, hit me up. 3D design was a really tough class for me because uh, I had to think abstractly for the first time pretty much ever. It really took me some time to get used to thinking outside of reality, outside of representational uh, work. This was probably the finest thing I created uh, my first semester, maybe my first year, maybe the entire time I've been here. This is definitely at least 70 hours of work. I really wish now that I had done a time lapse of making this because it was insane. Went through probably 150 glue sticks, and then when it came time to put it on the on the mount that I had made, the snake itself was so heavy that I couldn't use super glue, so it's actually bolted with three metal bolts to the cardboard back. The things we do for art. Zero Degrees Kelvin, I'll have you know that I just made up most of these names because I didn't feel like making them Untitled 1, Untitled 2, Untitled 3, so I just spat out random names for all of them. This is a plaster project we did. I think I had some other idea in mind at first, but then it didn't work, so I just carved it down into the small comet geometric thing. This project is where I really started to get a feel for working intuitively, just kind of letting myself go. I also learned to like decide what the piece needed and then make that happen regardless of how hard that was going to be to do, so I decided that I basically needed a hula hoop of wood. I had to glue a couple pieces of wood together and then cut out the circle and then sand it down into a ring, and it was incredibly time consuming, but I learned not to let that stop me from doing what I felt I needed to do. Drawing two we're about to take a step back, because drawing one ended well. Drawing two does not begin well. Fish in distress. I hadn't worked with oil pastels in I don't know how many years. I was literally still using the same oil pastels that I had in kindergarten. I wanted initially to make the entire background one color, uh, then I ran out of that color of oil pastel, so I had to use another color, and it ended up just looking like a diseased cow. Really, really not happy with this at all. This is a little bit better. We weren't allowed to use black, so we had to just mix colors to make dark tones. Whoa, leaf in perspective. So, so beautiful, so original. Distorted tricycle. I'm sorry that I don't have, like, words to say about all my work. And this is the best thing I did in that class. I did a super detailed pen and ink drawing of one of the buildings on campus, and I'm pretty happy with it. Computer imaging in design. This was a fun class. We started off just doing vector graphics, making faces, so I created Will Smith Does Not Do Drugs. Did a couple abstract things just with blending layers in Illustrator. Sorry for moving quickly, but I don't want this video to be 20 minutes long. I had to do digital painting, and this is what ended up being created. We did this thing called Exquisite Corpse, where you fold a paper three ways, and you draw a head, and then you, pass the, you fold the paper over, pass it to your partner, so that they can't see what you drew for the head, but then they draw a body and they pass it back to you after folding it over so you can't see what they drew, and then you draw legs. So I came up with this octopus dude with a Christmas tree body. 
uh, who's apparently a DJ in hell. And then there's this, which is for a uh, photo manipulation assignment. Last but not least for this class, uh, I created the early worm. Uploaded that to YouTube at the end of my freshman year. Uh, so if you haven't seen it, you can go check that out. I'll link it in the description. Photo media studies. We started doing photograms. It's where you just put stuff on top of the photo paper under the enlarger. I experimented with pouring like developer over the paper instead of dunking the paper in the developer just to get some interesting effects. Moved on to Holga cameras, which are these toy cameras. They're plastic, they're like 40 bucks, although they might be more expensive now because Holga went out of business. But I took them into the studio and did some, did some portraiture. You never really can know uh, what's gonna be in focus with those cameras. And the shutter speed is set at I think one one hundredth of a second, so there's not much you can prepare for. Here are some failed attempts at alternative processes, cyanotype and argyrotype. Things totally got screwed up, but I still learned to appreciate them for what they were. I'm a very technically minded person, things need to go perfectly, and uh, when they don't, I get upset. So just learning to look at this and be like, Alright, what can I appreciate about this? What's, what's interesting? Graduated 35mm, this is at a French bakery, just couple minutes down the road. It was at that moment that he knew. Did some double exposures, some long exposures. This is in an old abandoned, I, I, mean, I should have done a video in there. There's an old abandoned mill, distribution center, warehouse, compound over there that they're now renovating. Uh, but back in the day, you could go exploring in there and it was very cool. This is a triptych of pinhole camera photos that actually got printed huge for a, a class show that we did. They're printed on linen, I think. Uh, it's in my drawer, but I'm not gonna bother getting it out because it's it's floor to ceiling, it's huge. Digital photography. Digital photo is the, the beginning photo class that everyone has to take now. It's really just how to use your camera, how to get certain effects. So this was a picture showing motion, go figure. Pulled this old photo out and turned it in for a photo manipulation assignment. And then for my final project for the series, I just went down this old rural highway uh, near here that I drive to go to Greenville and uh, just shot some of the interesting things that you can see along there. This one's probably my favorite just from a formalist perspective. You got the rapture ready church and the tree going straight up the middle. I like it. Color photo, believe it or not, focuses on color. We did both film and digital. This is a mason jar with sticky notes in it. Macro watch shot. That's a lava lamp. This was an assignment to portray your parents in a photograph. I can neither confirm nor deny that that's what I ended up doing. I just kind of went with it, but regardless, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. We had the box project, so we had to we had to do things with a box, like make this cardboard box interesting, right? So I attempted to do a PSA about texting and driving, um, just parked out in the parking lot near my dorm. It's intentionally out of focus, although maybe it's a little too out of focus because it's a little hard to tell that there's a phone in my hand. But this was this was a fun shot to create. Here's another one from, from that series. This photograph has actually won um, a couple awards. It was published in Photographer's Forum Best of High School and College Photography for this past year. For one class I was supposed to do a panorama and for another class I was supposed to do like a film noir thing. So I combined the two and did a panoramic film noir, even though it's in color. Some people some people think you can't do color in film noir, but whatever. And then for my final project for this series, I did uh, a series I called That's Nasty. Basically taking good looking color combinations and combining them with foods that should not go together. Although I've heard Oreos and orange juice is not that bad and I would be willing to try it. Easy cheese and kiwi, maybe not. I don't think I'm into that. Some people are the most grossed off by this one, olives with garlic and pomegranate, but I don't know, I feel like that wouldn't be too bad. But there you have it, that's just a little glimpse at some of the things I've been doing with my life for the past two years. Um, like I said, I have a long way to go, and I'm well aware of that, but I think I've also come a long way, so I'm okay. I'll be alright. Feel free to roast me in the comments, that's alright, you can do that. Just thought I'd give you a little glimpse into another side of my life. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you again soon. Sam out.